Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture. I am Udom Philemon of Nubira Process Designer. And in this lecture, I'll be showing you guys how to simulate a three-phase separator. Now, a three-phase separator is an equipment that separates a mixture into three parts, which is usually a gas phase and then two liquid phases of which you would have a light liquid and a heavier liquid now in this um, particular lesson we'll be simulating a crude oil mixture which would contain crude oil gas and water and then we'll be using the three phase separator to separate the mixture now, on the screen is a two-dimensional sketch of a three-phase separator. So you have the inlets and then the outlets. You have the inlets, then you have the outlets. You have the gas outlet, the light liquid outlet, and the heavy liquid outlet. So all the fluids enter and come out through nozzles so these are nozzles for the outlets then you also have you have a wear this line here or this demarcation here it's called a wear and the major aim of this wear is to um, help separate the lighter liquid from the heavier liquid so it helps gives a kind of direction of where the light liquid should go while the heavy liquid remains at the bottom so this is just a sketch of the three phase separator so now for our simulation this is what this is what our simulation will look like now we are using um the crude oil the petroleum assay to create our crude oil stream that's what we are going to be using then also we'll be adding a gas feed and then a water feed as well now the essence of adding the gas feed is because the amount of gas in the crude oil feed is actually very very low if you check the composition the amount of light components in the crude oil feed is very low so the essence of adding the gas feed is to supplement the amount of gas in the crude then we'll also be adding water to complete the three phases so we have a gas phase then we have a light liquid phase and then a heavy liquid phase then all of them will be coming into the process at standard conditions so you have 25 degrees celsius one atm for each of them so we are going to the first step is to increase their pressure increase their pressure so for gas feed we are using a compressor to increase the pressure for the two liquid phases we are using a centrifugal pump to increase the pressure then when after the pressure has been increased we then send all of them into a mixer we send all of them into a mixer then we now heat slightly we heat the mixed the mixture slightly before we now send it into the three phase separator now the essence of this slight heating is so that any gas or vapor present in the liquid phase can easily be vaporized so that's the essence of the slight heating but you will not heat it so much so that it doesn't vaporize the heavy components in the mixture so just heat a little before sending into the um into the uh three phase separator so that's it so this is what we'll be simulating in this particular lecture so now 
when simulating a process that involves a three phase separator the one of the key factors you have to look put into consideration is the density of the components in the mixture right so now the separation in the three phase separator the separation that occurs in the three phase separator occurs based on density right so the less dense components go up while the denser components come down so in a case where you have a mixture of gas light liquid and heavy liquid the gas is obviously going to towards the top of the three phase separator while the lighter liquid will be somewhere around the middle and then the heavier liquid will be at the bottom now for a mixture of gas oil and water gas is the least dense followed by crude oil and then water now from our from the simulation environment we can see the density of our feed streams of gas feed raw crude and raw water for gas feed we have a density a mass density of 1.802 then for raw crude for raw crude we have a mass density of 836.5 and then for raw water we have a mass density of 1007 kilogram per meter cube if you can see my cursor now the density of these um, components have nothing to do with the molar flow of the feed what i mean is if you even if you change the um the molar flow of that stream it doesn't affect the density right it doesn't have any effect on the density the density is constant at standard conditions it doesn't the molar flow of the of the substances doesn't affect the density so but even though we are still going to be using constant or the same flow rate for each of the streams so here we have 2000 barrel per day okay same with um the raw crude still 2000 as well as the raw water also 2000 barrel per day so we are just using the same but even at the same molar flow they have different um densities because of the components involved right so now you will see that raw water has the highest density followed by raw crude and then the last is gas yeah gas feed so automatically you will be having the gas going through the top of the separator then the water the oil will go through the middle portion and then the water will be at the bottom or be collected from the bottom of the separator so that's just the basics of the three phase separator it is widely used in the oil and gas industry for separation of mixtures okay so at this point we are going to begin the simulation now like i explained earlier we added the gas feed in order to complement the components the light components in the mixture now if you simulate this process without this gas feed you should be having something like this You should be having something like this in this case i simulated the same process with just water and the crude feed that was gotten from the petroleum assay and as you can see from the material stream table the material stream table you see that the gas phase does not have any flow rates the molar flow mass flow and liquid volume flow are all zero and this is because 
there is little or no amount of gas in the crude oil that is fed in so that's why i added that um, gas stream okay so now to begin the simulation i'll be using this particular simulation case now we start from the beginning okay so for our um for our crude oil we make use of we make use of s s cravos s cravos 1983 so it's very simple just click on add once you click on add you click on the country you choose the country you search for nigeria you click on it and then you click on whichever crude oil um, assay you want to use and then you click ok but i've already chosen um s -Cravos, so there is no need to choose anymore so we'll just be going over to the simulation environment directly now once you choose the particular crude oil you want automatically the components are added to the component list as well as the fluid package which in this case is pengrove insin so you get both your components and the fluid package so i'll be going over to the simulation environment so for the For the gas feed, we have a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, 100, I'm sorry, 1 ATM, which is 101.3 kilopascal, and then 2000 barrel per day. That's for the gas feed. Now, this is the composition of the gas. So, for the composition of the gas, we have methane at 0 0.25, ethane at 0 0.2 propane at 0 0.1 ibutane 0 0.1 n-butane 0 0.15 ipentane 0 0.1 n-pentane 0 0.1 okay and that should be it for the gas stream then for the water stream it's still the same process conditions atmospheric conditions then 2000 barrel per day and then composition of water is one yes composition of water is one so those two are specified then for raw crude we still have atmospheric conditions 25 degrees celsius 180 m then 2000 barrel per day then for composition we make use of petroleum assay. You click on the radio button, attach existing, then you choose your already specified crude and you get your assay attached and then the crude oil stream solves. So that's that for that. Then for the increase of pressure, all we just do is to specify the outlet pressure the outlet pressure of each of the um, pressure equipment the compressor so we just specify the outlet pressure as 300 kpa same for the two centrifugal pumps you specify outlet pressure and it solves just outlet pressure ISIS calculates the rest Same with this, you specify outlet pressure, it calculates both delta P and duty. So after we um, increase the pressure of all the strings, the next is to feed them into the mixer. So for the mixer, you specify all the pressurized fluids as your inlet and then you create 
an outlet for the mixer and that's it for the mixer so you just specify the three pressurized fluids the gas the crude oil the pumped crude oil and the pumped water you specify three of them and then you specify the mix out and then that's it for that now after specifying your mix out the next is to heat the crude oil mixture slightly just a little so in this case you specify your pressure drop as 35 kpa pressure drop of 35 kpa then you specify an outlet temperature outlet temperature of 50 degrees celsius so just that and we are good to go and we are now at the point where we start the three phase separator simulation right so all this that was done is just to prepare the mixture for the separation okay so now the three phase separator can be gotten from the palette obviously the model palette here is the three phase separator you can see it from my cursor so we'll be getting one out now the three phase separator is actually in a group called separators a group called separators yes okay so here in design we are going to be connecting the inlet and outlet stream so our inlet stream is hot mix which is this hot mix then outlet for outlet we'll create a vapor outlet gas then a liquid outlet which we would call crude oil and then the bottom we'll just call it we'll call it water can we do that enter so we'll call it water so once you once you um, specify all that your three phase separator on a normal day should solve without any other specifications but then there are a lot of things you can still specify in the three phase separator and i'll be showing some of them to you at the moment now let's open back the form now the first thing one of the things you can specify apart from attaching the streams is energy so if there is an energy change in the separator you can add a an energy stream let's say qs now when you add an energy stream obviously you would either be required to specify duty or outlet temperature so either of them so if you wish to specify if you wish to specify duty you could specify duty right here or you can specify the outlet temperature of any of the streams so if you take crude oil and maybe you say 45 degrees celsius enter once you specify the outlet temperature it automatically solves every other thing so that's one of the things you can specify in a three phase separator apart from just automatically connecting all the streams together which is normally supposed to solve everything okay so now i said initially i said this um three phase separator is in a group called separators now if you check the parameters tab if you can see my cursor if you can see my cursor you have type you have the separator three phase sep and tank now they are grouped together because they operate almost in the same way now if we if we get out another separator let's see 
another three phase just for illustration now for illustration sake you go to parameter now if you click on the radio button separator the three phase separator automatically changes to the two phase separator you see that it changes if you click on tank the radio button tank it changes into a tank so now three of them work similarly they work in a very similar manner the difference now is their outlet streams so a two-phase separator separates a mixture into just two phases liquid and vapor phase while a three-phase separator separates into a a a um into three phases which is the gas phase then the light and the heavy liquid phase right so that's those are the major differences between the three of them but apart from that they mostly have the same configuration right so that's it for that so i'll be deleting this so from what we have done now we can go over to we can go over to worksheet and check composition and see what our um the composition of the streams look like but before then you can now see that we have our crude oil and then we have our gas not zero because we added gas to the process so three of them have been separated we have our water phase our gas phase and then our oil phase now if you check the composition for the composition you would notice that for water water has just water in it so you have composition of h2o as one as you can see for the water phase then for the gas phase for the gas phase you will notice that most of the composition is in the gaseous part of the components as you can see you see methane this is ethane propane right and butane and the rest that's where you have a good amount of the composition of the gas then you just have you have little amount towards the heavy fraction while for the crude oil you will see that a good amount of the crude composition is at the heavier part of the component list as you can see it's at the heavier part so it has been separated into the crude the gas and the water right based on how it should be now let's go back to the specification of a three-phase separator okay so first we have talked about the how you have the three groups or the three equipment in this group you have the separator three phase and the tank that's the first thing then the second thing will be the delta p now you can specify a pressure drop for both your inlet and your vapor outlet now if you specify an inlet pressure drop what it means is that there will be a pressure drop between the feed and the outlet right so if you specify a pressure drop of 10 10 kpa your outlet pressure will be less than your inlet pressure by 10 kilopascal right now for vapor outlet pressure drop which is this one vapor outlet um pressure drop that one is specifically for the vapor outlet so if you specify a vapor outlet pressure drop it is just the vapor outlet that would have that decrease in pressure so i'll be illustrating that quickly let's see so let's go back to our conditions for our conditions you can see our pressure our pressure is equal throughout 
because the pressure drops are zero now if you read if you specify let's say we specify 10 kpa here and here too we specify 10 kpa now we go back and check worksheet now you see you see that the pressure drop has reduced now this is the inlet 265 pressure drop of inlet is 10 so the pressure drop of the pressure of the outlet will be 265 minus 10 so that's why you have 255 for crude oil as well as water you have 255 now for gas you have 245 because of the pressure drop of the inlets as well as the vapor outlet pressure drop you see it the pressure drop of the inlet and the vapor outlet pressure drop so if you add two of them together is 10 plus 10 which is 20 and if you check it you would have 265 minus 20 which is 245 so that's how the pressure drop works for the vapor outlet now you have this for that then over here you have volume and then liquid volume now for volume you could you could specify volume from here you could specify volume from here or from the ratings tab so um we'll be coming over to that later so let's just continue so that is for parameters then the next is reactions then this is user variable okay so the next is reactions now sorry let me minimize this a little so for reactions a, a separator can actually work as a reactor a separator can can serve as a reactor now if your mixture the mixture you want to separate if a reaction is taking place in that mixture then you have to specify it and that is why the separator has a reactor tab right here even i even i tried simulating a process i simulated the process with a cstr and then a two-phase separator which is also a type of a separator and then I check the results. This is for the CSTR. And this is for the separator. Now if you go to reactions. And you check results. You will see that the results are the same. For both of them. So this proves that a separator can actually be used as a reactor. Now that is why you have... That is why you have this reactor section in case that mixture has a reaction going on within it. You have the opportunity to add the reaction in your pro properties environment and then now specify the reaction details over here, right? Even as the separation is taking place, that's the essence of this reactor section. So the next is rating. Now, for rating, the first in the rating menu is the sizing. So you can size your, your three-phase separator. You can size it, determine which um, shape it's supposed to take, whether cylinder, sphere, the epizoidal head or the hem hemispherical head. But the most popular kind of separator is the flat cylinder, which is already selected right horizontal flat cylinder that's the most popular kind of three-phase separator now here you can specify volume if you specify volume automatically isis calculates diameter length and whatever or you could specify 
you could specify the diameter and the length and then it calculates it calculates the the volume now it's always safer to use the it's safer to use the quick size it's usually safer to use the quick size so ICS automatically specifies the volume and the dimensions based on based on the process conditions so it specifies the volume it specifies the volume for you now so that's it for um, sizing then if you want to add a wear, which is very important in a scenario where you are simulating a real life scenario, you should add a wear, a wear, because the wear acts as a direction for the fluids, the liquids, right? It gives direction into where the lighter liquid should flow into. So it's very important to add a wear when simulating a three phase separator now once you click on enable where you can click on the dialog box and you get to specify the where details the physical wear height that's the height of the wear itself then the wear position the wear position is the distance from the inlets of the separator to the wear so the distance from that inlet to where the wear can be found is the wear position then you can specify the other details and that will be it for the wear specification then you have nozzles okay so the nozzles are just they are the the holes or the passages from where the in the feed and the outlets will come out from so you have inlet nozzles and then outlet nozzles for the gas and two liquid phases yeah so you get to also specify them as well you can specify their diameter elevation then the ground elevation and the elevation percentage right so these values were specified based on the initial specifications we made let's go back to sizing okay so for example you have the diameter then you have the crude oil coming out at the same value we had at the diameter of the separator so all this can be changed based on the specification of the separator you are simulating so depending on the user specification you can specify all these values for your nozzles then you have heat loss for heat loss you have three models for heat loss you have the non the simple and the detailed now when you specify none then you are simply saying there is no heat loss with respect to the walls of the separator no heat loss then for simple you have the simple um, heat loss parameters which you can specify to your taste then you have detailed for detailed you have the temperature model you have the conduction and then you have the convection so depending on the data you have you can specify any of them you can specify any of them based on the data you have then we have the level tap which is used in dynamics use it when you want to monitor a certain section of the separator so this is where you specify you make specifications you click on new level tap and then you specify the necessary details then next we have we have options the option section helps us to specify 
the isentropic efficiency of the three phase separator right so if you want to do so you have to click on enable work term co contribution right so in a case where it is disabled it means the separator is ideal but when you are separate when you are simulating a real life separator you may want to specify the work term contribution so you can click on this and then change the value to whatever it is you want to specify it as as you have here you say it says values used there are commonly within the range of 87 to 98 percent of course you can't have 100 percent efficiency then you have the carryover setup now the carryover has to do with how much of a particular phase is in another phase for example you can have in the gaseous phase you can have a little amount of light liquid and heavy liquid in the light liquid phase you can have a little amount of gas and a little amount of heavy liquid so this is where you specify such details because the separation can never be 100 percent so in all those three phases you would have a little of the other two phases so in the gas outlet you have a little of light liquid and a little of heavy liquid in the heavy liquid outlet you have a little of the gas and a little of the light liquid and so on so this is where you make such specifications so you have the first is none which signifies that there is no carryover in any of the phases then you have the feed basis what it means is you'll be specifying the carryover from the feed the feed into the three phase separator then you have the product basis which signifies that you'll be specifying how much is carried over from the products then you have the correlation based now let's use the product base as an example now we'll be making use of um yes more fraction more fraction let's check the values now you see the values of the products for crude oil you have 15.23 gas 11.36 and water 13.15 now if we go back to rating and we specify for the carryover let's say we use a carryover of 0.1 for each of them the light liquid in gas we specify 0.1 for most apart from heavy liquid in light liquid and then light liquid in heavy liquid so these are the more fractions of each of these so light liquid in gas what it means is that the light liquid is crude oil so the more fraction of crude oil because the basis is mole fraction so the more fraction of crude oil in gas should be 0 0.1 and then you specify heavy liquid in gas which is water in gas then gas in crude oil water in crude oil gas in water and then crude oil in water now if you go back to check the worksheet you see that it has changed making those specifications have changed the flow rate you see that the flow rate has changed because of those specifications that were made so this is how these things work right and these specifications should be made because you can't have um and you can't have a complete separation a complete separation of all these phases so there is need to actually make all these specifications while simulating the three phase separator so going back to rating now that is for product basis for correlation based it's quite rigorous you would have to specify a lot of things here before you'll be able to get your separator to solve 
right so if you have such data you can easily specify them right here in the correlation based so that's it so let's just go back to the product basis so that's it for the rating tab now for let's go back to nozzles for nozzles all these specifications here are supposed to be made for each of the nozzles now from our sketch you have the inlet nozzle you have the gas outlet you have the light liquid outlet and the heavy liquid outlet so whatever specifications you are making whatever specifications you are making here is to specify what they will be like right their diameter the length and everything so that's what is being specified here now for the where for the where like i said before let's go back to okay sizing yes for the where for the where you have physical wear height and wear position now let me just illustrate that so you have the physical wear height so the physical wear height will be the height of the wear that is from here to here that's the height then the wear position yes the wear position the wear position is the distance from the wear to the inlet of the separator so that distance the distance of the wear, the inlet to the wear position to the wear location is the wear position so if you are able to determine this distance the distance from here to here is actually what you are supposed to specify over there so i just decided to point it out okay so that's it for that then for dynamics mostly whatever you are specifying here will be used when you are in dynamics mode right so normally when you have already specified from the rating tab when you specify your volume it automatically gets specified over here automatically it gets specified over here then you have your liquid volume percent then liquid percent level which are usually the same if you want to change them you could change them over here you could change them over here for example you change it to 80 percent they automatically change here now the liquid volume you have here is actually gotten by multiplying the liquid percent level by the volume of the separator so it cannot actually be edited it is usually based on the volume and the liquid volume percent so that's it for that what else okay here you can specify you can specify specify phase hold up for the different phases while using the dynamics mode so i think i have gone through most most of the parts and sections of the three phase separator right so this is how you, you simulate a three phase separator using aspen isis i hope you have gained some knowledge today in today's lecture right so i expect you to drop comments based on your observations you could like the video as well and then if you haven't subscribed you could do so to get notifications from us for subsequent uploads thank you everyone and have a good day